From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. We had a lot of responses from our haunted objects episode, uh, people writing in about their own experience with haunted objects. And I found one that reads kind of nicely, like a quickie little ghost story. So I thought I would uh, share that with everyone today. This one comes from Mark, and it's about an uh, experience that he had with a haunted object. Here it goes. Around 1999, my family and I moved into a house owned by our family previously, and it was very old and had lots of history. This house was what was known as a mining hut back in the day that was owned by a mining company, but leased by workers for uh, living in. I was about six years old at the time when we moved in and started remodeling it. During the renovations, my father came upon a blue rubber ball. Unassuming, I know, but wait, here's where it gets crazy. Ha ha ha. Powerful words. Uh, I played with this ball for a bit and forgot about it. And as children do, moved on from it. One day, as I was just roaming the house, I found the ball down in our dining room area. And thinking nothing of it, I just tossed it into the yard. Fast forward a couple days, and I found this ball up in my bedroom. Assuming, as I did, that my little brother grabbed it and put it in there, I just left it on a shelf. Now I was home from school sick one day, and my mom stayed home from work to look after me. As I'm laying on the couch and mom is making me some food, we hear some light rubbery thuds down the stairs. Boing, 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 boing. Followed by a blue rubber ball coming from the stairwell and rolling past her and me into the living room. Now we had a cat, so mom said it must have been her. Mom threw the ball back up and then as if by magic, uh, as if it were being thrown back down, here it comes, bouncing down and back where we were. Now, I know maybe it was the cat, except the cat was verified to be in the room with us. Mom got creeped out, and I was pretty shocked, and she threw it away, and it was taken out with the trash. Now, a few years went by, and we moved, and one day I came home from a friend's house and go through my stuff, and on the bed, I opened my clothes drawer to get some fresh shorts, and there it is the blue rubber ball that couldn't have been placed in there because it was all the way in the back of the drawer under my clothes. Uh, and now I can tell you that mom and I had never told anyone about the ball because we actually forgot about it. So I was kind of taken aback. Then I ran down the stairs and grabbed my mom and showed her. And she was very shaken by this. Uh, we finally told my brother and my dad the story. And my dad, always the skeptical one, uh, once again, threw the ball out. So you might be asking, how do you know he threw the ball out? Uh, or why didn't he burn it or something? Um, and my he, then he says, well, my good sirs, uh, time went on. I moved out, grew older, and got my own house with my fiance. Never for one day did I think about the ball until I came home one day and sitting on my desk is the ball. Now, my fiance clearly hears me gasp and sees me looking at it. And she says, while doing laundry, she found it under a pile of clothes and assumed it was ours for the dogs. So I tell her the story and she's quite disturbed. But now I can't get rid of it because I know it'll come back. So now it sits in my cabinet of curiosities. Now, I don't know if you'll see this story, but if you would like pictures of the ball, I'll be more than happy to send them. Wow. Wow. I found that story somewhat chilling. Hey, yes, I think so. Let's talk about it, and then I want to offer up my uh, hypothesis. I love it. I love it. I feel like there is a, a rational explanation, uh, but it's like I said, like, I mean, the one brush with the afterlife or with, with ghosts that I ever had, I felt it in the moment as though I were truly experiencing something supernatural, and then only a day or so later was able to explain it away with what it really was. Um, it didn't change that feeling though. You know what I mean? I still felt some connection. Uh, absolutely. And, absolutely. and, and I, I wonder, I think even explaining away this, a story like this, I think the, the feeling is still there. Um, did the ball have malicious intent? 
Is this just one of those like cursed objects that's just trying to freak people out? Or is it, is it, is it the kind of ball that'll like bounce under someone's foot while they're walking down the steps and like, you know, take them out? Well, there are, there are a couple of things we have to establish here that we don't have the information for. So we have to, you know, let's just talk about it and let's let's see what you think. I don't know if you guys are picturing the same blue ball in your mind as I am. We grew up in the 80s and 90s. I see this old ball that I had. It was called, it was, yeah, it was definitely called a sky bounce. I think that was what it was called. It was a little blue rubber ball that was meant to bounce very, very high. Um, maybe that's not it. That's what I remember and what I had. Those in particular would come in like you could get them in multiples. Like cans of three, like racquetballs. Or yeah, like a tennis ball situation. Exactly. Um, so I'm wondering if that's what it was or if it was, you know, something that was just in the house. It may have been from the 70s or even earlier. A uh, different kind of rubber ball. As we know, rubber has been around for a long time. But uh, what what do you guys picture in your head? A super ball? Yeah, like exactly like, like that. One of those like dense rubber, blue rubber balls that bounce really, really high. So uh, what I immediately thought of when I read, read your story originally was the... This, and I'm putting it in our group chat here. Uh, for anybody who's familiar with racquetball... There's a specific yes. type of surface or substance they're made of, which is rubber like, uh, but synthetic. And a bunch of like if you had dogs, you probably you might have had some of these or growing up if you're if your parents played sports or if you played a sport like racquetball, uh, these these are pretty familiar. But one thing I don't know about you guys, one thing I learned from the haunted objects episode, you know, I'm always pushing to explore more paranormal stuff, is that uh, we have a lot of people who feel that they have weird stuff in their houses. I think I mentioned the, um, oh, I can look at it now just at the edge of the darkness from the laptop. I mentioned I have that carving that I just try to be as respectful to. And non, uh, I try not to engage with it very much, like to the point where I'm not super comfortable carrying it around. And I know there's not a logical explanation for that, but um, there is a long history kind of of, um, well, it's a trope almost, the inescapable object, right? Uh, it's it's almost a, a predecessor. I'm sure there's some there's some academic somewhere who's, who has made this an argument for uh like an allegory for the problems of capitalism eventually at some point you realize your possessions own you uh mm -hmm. so that's uh but i don't think that's what we're talking about here i think this is le a legitimate question from someone who's thinking very rationally about what the hell has happened over my life such that i may be being pursued by a haunted ball, and if so, what does it mean? And also, props to your fiance for uh, taking you seriously and not being that stereotype in a horror movie. I hate when that happens. So it's such a lazy ride. Oh, it's only the wind. You know what I mean? Um, which I've got an overly developed metaphor analogy for um, as it relates to real life events. But I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm interested to hear more hypotheses and i think i know where you might be going there matt sorry if i derailed this a little these are sold in multiples often that's yes ben that's exactly where i was going i was imagining a handball racquetball i think this the one i mentioned is a handball mm -hmm. set that you can get in one of those packages and i was just imagining wherever they originated however they got into the house in the first place maybe they did come in multiples maybe a couple of them got put away maybe he was really young or this person was really young when they were playing with the balls more often or more frequently and then both he and mom forgot they even had them because who, who cares it was just a couple balls we got a long time ago one ended up in way in the back one ended up down here one ended up over there in a drawer it's just uh <laughs> that that's that's my it was just the wind scenario <laughs> but it's that i mean that's plausible right like there's also the question well i i had i i run with sketchy crews of 
ethically dubious people. So one of, and I'm related to quite a few of them as well. So one of my questions was like, could your family be purposely pranking you? Uh, yeah. Fiance <laughs> bonding with her in-laws and they're like, don't say anything. We'll just take this ball and put it under the clothes. Okay. You are the best <laughs> daughter-in-law. Oh my God. This is going to be epic. That probably didn't happen. And I think you would have known like based on, the way your fiance reacted to your distress, which again speaks very highly to their character, um, makes me think that there wouldn't be any pranks or shenanigans. You know, it's just it's something my family would certainly think is hilarious, but that's luckily not the case for other families. I mean, what do you guys what do you guys think? That's that's the big thing, the time interval, right? The pause for years of never seeing this. Ben, I keep thinking about your prank angle now, and I'm just imagining uh, this person is going to be, you know, they're going to arrive home and they're going to find the blue ball once again, like in the microwave or something. And they're going to open it up, see it in there. <gasps> and then Tracy Morgan's going to pop out and be like, ha, are you scared? It's scare tactics. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't be scared. And it's, it's like the ball was Bruce Willis the whole time. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We're burying the lead here. Tracy Morgan had a prank show. Uh, Tracy Morgan recorded a bunch of segments for a prank show. Got it. Completely separately from the show. Uh, <laughs> just, okay. Fair. Right. Uh, also, I, I also thought, you know, are we being unfair about the motivations of the ball? What if it just wants to hang out? What if you're its you favorite with person it. out of billions of people? <gasps> it's Woody. The blue ball is Woody. And it shows you Pokemon style. You know what I mean? That's dope. <laughs> <laughs>